I think these ducks, these ducks think I've got some bread to give them. Well, they can kiss my ass. I don't have any bread for them. I do love feeding ducks, however. Um, another gigantic coconut fell over there. That's why I'm not filming underneath these big ass coconut trees. I'm not too interested in caving my effing skull in from a gigantic. Ah, hey, how did that fat tattooed photographer asshole die? Well, he was making a video on photography and a coconut done fell on his head. <laughs> um, this is a serious video. I do have a demented sense of humor, as if you didn't know that crap already. Um, here's a question you need to ask yourself. Now, all companies survive by uh, creating new crap and making you desire new crap that you don't necessarily need because the crap that you got is outdated crap and you need to buy more crap and spend more money to get new crap that they invented. And uh, have you ever really asked yourself why you really think you need a full frame sensor camera? If you can actually, I've actually Googled, not for my own informational purposes, but I actually Googled uh, the top uh, 10 uh, YouTube vids on, uh, of course I know the difference obviously, but uh, why you should have a full frame sensor camera versus an APS-C sensor. Well, I'm not going to argue over micro four thirds because that's, uh, that is some outdated crap that you don't want uh, glass for anyway. And uh, of course a lot of people like to slap me over that, but I don't give a damn. But full frame over APS-C sensor camera, do you really think you have a reason for justification? Well, well I currently have an Icon D7100 and it's great, you know, uh, that uh, fat bald asshole angry photographer talked me into buying it and I love it, but ultimately I'm going to save up and buy me one of them full frame cameras. Well, I've got all those full frame cameras <laughs> and uh, this is an APS-C crop sensor camera right around my neck here. It's a Fuji X-T10, but it, it's not, this isn't a video about Fuji. The question is, also you need to ask yourself why bird photographers that have $19,000 uh, 500-600 millimeter lenses are shooting on APS-C crop sensors because they crop the crap out of everything that they shoot and uh, photosite density being high is important. It does not exist on a full frame sensor. It does now with the new breed of sensors, cameras, the Canon was the first one to roll out their 50 megapixel sensor. All that is is a full frame sensor with DX pixel density. You can make the most gorgeous woman in the world look like a butt ugly dog and you could crop right the hell in on all her little broken blood vessels and all her little uh, blackheads and uh, the grease in her face. Doesn't matter how gorgeous the model is, you can make them look like a dog. That is great for some things that you can't get close to. It'd be great for wildlife photographers. I mean, that, that's going to be an awesome thing for them. This is what night. This is the future. Okay. Now you can come down here and kill me if I'm lying right now. I'm, I'm dying. I'm. A, I'm. A, if I'm lying, I'm dying. This is what's going to happen in March. Nikon is going to announce either one or two new full-frame cameras. It's going to be their flagship. It's probably going to be a Nikon D850. There's going to be a flagship Nikon D5. What they're going to be is they're going to be full frame sensory cameras with DX pixel density. The raw files are going to be effing ginormous. You are just going to, going to want to shit a brick in trying to edit those files. This is bad enough editing the raw files out of my D8, D810. You are going to think you have the slowest, most awful piece of crap computer imaginable. Even if you currently go out and buy the black trash can, which is Apple's flagship desktop computer, looks like a black, black trash can, and uh, you jam in there 64 gig of uh, RAM, uh, you're still going to have workflow. <laughs> you're st I know this for a fact. You're still going to have workflow issues in editing those ginormous raw files. I want to know what the hell it is you think you're going to be printing. If you're a wildlife photographer, if uh, you're a journalist that needs that sort of crop value, you're at the front lines of Palestine and uh, 300 millimeters is not close enough and people are firing uh, 762 by 39 Kalashnikov bullets over the top of your damn head and uh, you're still going to need to crop way the hell in, that's going to be an awesome camera for you. But for the rest of you, 99.9999% of people out there, you're being, fed, you're being fed a line of crap by Nikon and Canon and everybody else. You do not need that. You don't damn need it. What the hell are you printing now that you think you need that? This video ultimately is you ask yourself the question, what it is you lust for so badly 
out of a full frame uh, sensor uh, DSLR and I've got them all money isn't an object if I need to go out tomorrow and drop some serious buck on another camera which God knows I don't need another one I've got 10 Nikon Pro DSLRs and a couple Fuji's the X-T1 X-T10 and a couple point and shits I mean point and shoots uh, it's not a matter of money so I mean it's understandable if someone says, well, this is good enough. And they're in a good position. I can't afford that. That's also another position. But it's not that you can't afford it. You need to ask yourself your question, do you really need it? What are you going to get out of it? Well, it is true that APS-C sensor uh, lenses or DX uh, crop sensor lenses, uh, Nikon does not make a tremendous amount of them. And there's only a few of them that I recommend. I recommend uh, contrary to another uh, doofus on YouTube, you, you really shouldn't be buying anything other than full frame uh, sensor lenses. The reason being is that they're a lot cheaper, they're a lot more prolific, and uh, the resale value on them in case you ever decide to change up on something is just phenomenal. There are only a few DX uh, sensor Nikkor lenses that I would recommend. And of course a lot of the G series are mostly plastic lenses, like the 35mm f1.8 G is an incredible lens, the 12 to 24 Nikkor. DX uh, lens is awesome. The 10.5 millimeter uh, Nikkor fisheye, which works perfect on uh, on uh, full frame or DX, as I've already proven, with the castrated, uh, not the castrated, but the circumcised, <laughs> the circumcised lens that I showed you guys, where I cut off the uh, lens hood of the 10.5 millimeter Nikkor fisheye. The point being is that you do not need a full frame sensor camera. Even if you have the money for it, I want to know if you can actually tell me, this is a quiz for you, if you can rationally tell me a logical reason, other than the obvious fact of buying full frame lenses, which are a lot more prolific and a lot cheaper, but you can mount those on most DX sensor cameras anyway. If you can actually tell me why the hell, even if you have the money or if you don't or you're saving for it, why the hell you actually need a full frame sensor camera and uh, you're going to be hard pressed to find a logical uh, reason for that. I mean, I, I'm questioning this to you, if you could actually write it in the comments section below, and uh, if you post anything, it's going to be either invalid or it's going to be a rationalized decision that somebody else made for you in probably a photography magazine or over on diaper and pee review. Oh, well, you need to save by a full frame sensor camera. Why? Why the hell do you need to buy? or save up for an expensive full frame sensor camera. Well, you're shooting on a full frame sensor camera. Well, so what? I don't mind shooting. I got a tugboat coming over here. That's where the noise is coming from. You don't need a full frame sensor camera. Now, a few of you might. So that's a generalization. But a generalization is still a truism, OK? Um, so just answer that question for me below if you don't already have one, or even if you do have a full frame sensor camera, could you give me the rational reasoning? What's actually going on over there? Yeah, one giant ass boat tugging another giant ass boat over there. If you could give me a logical reasoning why you think you need a full frame sensor camera, okay? I'd appreciate your comments, and let's see if we could have a little quiz going on so we could all educate, I mean, you're not educating me, but <laughs> you educate yourself. And let's get down to the nitty gritty here. Instead of everything being based upon gear lust, but rather upon logical reasoning of why you need something versus why you want something. Were you persuaded to want something? Well, I've got the Nikon D810, and you know, if you got that old piece of APS-C shit camera, you know, save up your pennies and you might get a pro. You know, that crap is nonsense, okay? I'm about saving you money, okay? And there has been nothing short of 100% approval from all of you, except for one person that got a dead camera, but that's not my damn fault. 100% approval from all of you that bought the Nikon D7100. Right now, not only is it a deal, it's an epic steal at $500. You should jump on top of that. So anyway, answer that question for me below if you would. Even if you have a full frame, save up for one, uh, let me know your reasoning behind it, okay? Bye.